Okay. Um, what I want to do now is uh, introduce you to the geographic reasons why Great Britain is the first nation to industrialize, and then uh, briefly why the United States is the second nation to industrialize. Um, again, geography is going to make all the difference in this. Um, so if you remember, after about the year 1500, and this is according to um, David Christian and his his ideas of big history, um, basically looking at the broad patterns of history. Um, after 1500, the world began to accelerate rapidly. Um, and by acceleration, we mean changes in technology, growth in population, uh, more interconnection, um, increase in trade, and basically um, all the patterns that we have today, these, uh, these life patterns or um, patterns of daily life began to really accelerate after 1500. Uh, the three reasons why basically are interconnection between world zones. I remember the, um, the Spanish and Portuguese uh, had uh, sailed to the Americas and had begun to really extract resources from those places and uh, build communication between those two places. Um, you also had increase in competition. So with the new surpluses that were coming from the Americas and with better technology, which had basically been built upon um, for really centuries ever since um, the earliest civilizations, these, these technologies had just been built upon and built upon and then spread between places in World Zone 1. Um, so you had increase in competition um, and international competitive markets. So, um, and you also have the discovery of fossil fuels, which are going to be used to power machines in manufacturing, um, and machines will replace human labor. And once again, this is going to lead to Europe actually being in the most dominant position of power. Um, remember that Europe is the one that uh, connects the world zones. Um, I mean, there's a lot of geographic reasons why Spain and Portugal were able to do that. And there's also a lot of reasons uh, for timing. Um, the Chinese, the great Chinese empire had fallen by about 1500. Um, you had uh, Islam had basically been defeated by Spain in Europe. Um, so Islam was not spreading in Europe much further. Um, and you also had a really militaristic society in Europe, um, a society that was... Uh, both reaping the benefits of like Islamic discoveries and also competing with one another to come up with new ideas. So with all of that, Britain has some special advantages. Um, and these are the advantages that are going to help it to industrialize. We're going to look at four that are really geographic, um, or at least three that are geographic, and then two more that uh, have to do with history and um, ideas. So we're going to look at five big reasons why Britain is the first to industrialize. First of all, we have topography. Um, and again, this is kind of the elevation and what the land looks like. Um, so rivers, we had a, a huge density of rivers. You've got a map here to the right that shows um, all the river systems in Britain. Um, these rivers basically come from um, uh, the snowmelt in Scottish Highlands. Um, but a lot of these rivers have also been just kind of like slowly dug out over centuries um, and improved upon by the human population. And the rivers allow both um, plentiful uh, water so that crops can be irrigated and also a plentiful energy source. If you remember the water mill, um, rivers are going to allow um, the development of the first water mills. Um, you also have a uh, really rich soil, which just happens to be high in things like iron. Um, and those are nutrients that agriculture actually needs. And so Great Britain was able to develop um, really good crops. And these two things combined lead to a high carrying capacity. So Britain was able to have a really high population. Um, the chart below demonstrates uh, like a sharp increase in population after about 1750 and this is kind of a combination of um, the uh, the British uh, rivers and soils and it's also um, uh, played into by a few other factors that we're going to look at. Um, you also have island geography so the first thing about this is that it's safe as you can see Britain is um, I mean a fairly large sized island uh, but it's not connected to mainland Europe so while all of these um, 
competitions are taking place between uh, European countries. Britain is part of it, but Britain is actually naturally defended, and so it's very, very hard to invade Britain. So when British military fight, um, they generally fight on mainly in Europe, not in Britain, which means that the British crops, the British cities, the British population is generally protected. Um, this also means that Britain has to use a navy, so they have to develop a navy. Um, so they're very interested in coming up with the best kinds of ships. Um, Britain is isolated without a navy. Um, and in addition, this leads to trade. Because Britain is focused on developing a navy and connecting, it's also focused on looking at other products that nations have and also exporting the products that it has. Okay, So this island geography leads to... Um, a lot of different factors, all of which are actually going to also help lead to an increase in human population. Um, you also have resources. Uh, so because Britain had a pretty high population, um, they actually had basically chopped down all of their trees. So they had deforested much of Britain, not all of the trees, but um, for the most part, they were running out of trees, especially in the southern part of the nation where there uh, are the biggest cities like London and Manchester. Um, and so they need something else to burn for actually for heat. Um, it gets pretty cold in Britain, um, and so people need heating. And without force, they had to turn to something called coal. And they had also developed the water mill, and so pretty soon they realized that coal could do other things like power steam. Um, it's no surprise that actually the first steam, or the... Uh, you know, the early steam engines and people like James Watt were, were Scottish, which is actually the northern part of Britain, which has lots and lots of river systems and uh, a little bit less coal than what would actually be in, well, not much less coal. Basically, they have lots of river systems. Um, and so with coal, you suddenly have Britons who um, need to produce a lot of energy to um, uh, kind of sustain this population, and they don't have forests to use for fuel. Um, and so you have a population that's already thinking about new ways to increase their energy output, um, and they're approached with this coal. And here you have a map um, of, uh, it's a also, it's actually a geological map. Um, and you can see, uh, basically, these are layers of the earth, how old they are and what they're made from. And these coal measures, which is in yellow, um, and then displayed on the map, it's in a dark blue. You can actually see that coal it is all over the place in Britain, relatively to most nations. This is a ton of coal. Um, these are basically coal fields that can be mined. So, in addition to its island geography and its topography, Britain also has lots of resources, including iron ore. If you remember, iron is actually a, a really crucial part of industrialization. You have to use it to um, build all these machines and to build all these factories that can sustain really high heat. Um, and Britain also happens to have a lot of iron ore. Um, now, we're going to look at two things that are not exactly geography, but geography has something to do with it. Um, Britain over a long time had developed joint stock companies and other ways of uh, basically funding private companies. Um, what a joint stock company is, is it's basically um, a way to put up a bunch of money for a risky business. Um, so for instance, sailing around the world looking for new things to trade, that's a really risky business. And um, most people aren't willing to put up all the money to do that. So instead, uh, a joint stock company, which is actually invented in um, Holland, which shares some similarities to Britain, um, people... Uh, actually could put up a small bit of money. and You have lots of people who put up the small bit of money, um, and that in turn creates a, uh, a large sum of money that a company can use to start a business. And if that business should fail, people don't lose a ton of money. They just lose a little bit of money. If the business succeeds, everybody makes a little bit of money. Um, you can think of this kind of as like almost an early form of crowdfunding. Um, but what this allows is... Um, not only can Britain uh, send ships off to long, faraway places to uh, try and find new products and to colonize places like the entire United States and Canada, um, you also 
allow uh, the construction of new factories, new bridges for transportation, new railroads. Um, so the joint stock company, which is a British innovation, is a, a huge help. Um, the reason why this has to do with geography is because Britain was, um, you know, generally the Catholic Church at first did not like these kinds of things. Um, they thought that lending money was um, in some ways usury, which is like kind of taking advantage of people. And so lots of uh, interesting financial innovations were kind of held in check in Southern Europe in areas around the church. Um, in Northern Europe, in places like Great Britain um, and Holland and uh, Northern Germany, uh, you actually had something known as the Protestant Reformation uh, where you had people breaking away from the Catholic Church, and that allowed all these new kinds of Protestant churches, places like, um, you know, Northern Germany and Holland and Britain, uh, really developed their own kinds of churches, from Lutheran to um, Methodist to Calvinist to um, the Church of England. Britain had the Church of England, which was basically its, its own kind of Protestant church, um, and they allowed these financial innovations. So, uh, once again, geography has something to do with this. Um, and then the missing strategy, or the missing ingredient here is strategy. Um, we've learned a little bit about Adam Smith so far, but Smith actually encouraged um, something called a free market, which meant really low taxes um, on any kind of businesses at home, this laissez-faire capitalism low taxes on imports of raw materials, so you can import lots and lots of cotton from all the places that Britain had gone out and found, or import tobacco, or import um, other raw materials, and export manufactured goods. And so um, what Britain would do is they would import a bunch of wool, they'd buy it at $2 a pound, um, they would um, produce it uh, basically in a factory with really cheap labor, um, and they'd sell it for more than the sum of its parts. So in essence, they could um, basically make things for really, really cheap and sell them at a little bit higher prices so that they could make a good price. And those higher prices would still be cheaper than the labor it would take without a machine. Um, so actually things like wool, Britain, Britain had lots of wool. Britain had lots of pasture lands with sheep, but they could also do it with like cotton or they could do it with... Um, other materials later on that um, can make manufactured goods. So uh, the strategy here is don't have a lot of taxes, import raw materials, export manufactured goods. And Adam Smith's idea here was that nations should try and get a trade imbalance, which is basically when a country is exporting more than they're really importing. So um, in other words, they are selling a lot more than they're buying, okay? Um, the United States is going to be the second nation to industrialize, and you could probably make a whole number of inferences from the U.S., but the constant theme in United States history, which is pretty undeniable, is the benefits of geography. The United States has basically lucked out on the best geography in, in the world, pretty much. Um, it was a country that was largely empty from the perspective of Europeans and um, later from Africans, which is that um, it had a fairly like relatively sparse native population in terms of density. Um, native uh, Americans were not as highly dense, high densely, let's see, highly dense populations as Europeans. Um, and many Native Americans actually died with contact with Europeans. Um, so you had a relatively empty country for Europeans to expand into. Um, and the natural resources in the United States are pretty amazing. Um, besides just iron reserves, you also uh, had huge floodplains in the southeast, in the deep south. Uh, that was perfect for growing things like cotton and tobacco. Um, you had coal in the Appalachian Mountains, plenty of coal, just as much coal as in Britain. Um, you had huge coastlines, which was also isolated from European conflicts. Um, it was pretty isolated from any conflict, actually. If you've noticed, we haven't really been invaded ever since the War of 1812. Um, 
And uh, this also meant that the United States, if they wanted to maintain contact, also had to build up um, a navy. Um, and you also, something that's not quite geographic but has something to do with geography is that uh, Americans highly value liberty and free enterprise. So the government encouraged this laissez-faire capitalism, this idea that the government shouldn't interfere with business too much, and so businesses should just compete and make the best products available. In essence, you have another perfect place for industrialization. Um, and there's one other thing, which is petroleum or oil. Um, in the late 19th century, Americans find oil essentially just lying around in Pennsylvania. Um, just kind of seeping out of the ground. And people had known about this petroleum for a long time, but um, no one had really used it with the same degree that the United States would use it. Um, first, it's used as like a lubricant for machines to make sure that machines are greased and can keep moving. Um, and then it's used for kerosene or lighting. Um, with the invention of electricity, you have a need to find something else to use oil for because Britain, or excuse me, America had invested in lots and lots of oil. Um, and so what they discovered is that um, with the, the creation of something known as the internal combustion engine, which would be used for cars, you could refine crude oil into something called gasoline. Um, and uh, what that meant is that suddenly you had what would become the most prevalent liquid fuel source for transportation in the entire world, and that's gasoline. Um, today, most of the world still uses either some kind of gasoline or diesel fuel, which comes from oil. Um, so late in the 19th century, the U.S. becomes an industrial superpower, first as oil from lubricant, then as oil for kerosene, and then as oil for a fuel source. And each time you have a new use for this oil, uh, oil becomes actually even more valuable. Um, with oil and these other geographic advantages, including things like coal, the, the U.S. would become the industrial superpower of the world basically by the turn of the century. So once again, um, nations that start with an advantage are going to build that advantage. It's called a positive feedback loop. Um, so here we have bank or joint stock company in green, but we could very easily replace that with something like natural resources. Um, so if a country begins with a certain number of natural resources and they can use those in the right way to uh, produce machines or an industrial economy, um, they're going to have advantages that are going to beat out other countries. And then the U.S. or Great Britain can take their, those other countries' resources and use it for their benefit. Um, so those nations that start with an advantage have an opportunity to build an even greater advantage. As you can see, um, these are actually, um, this map refers to uh, nations that had crude oil um, and uh, their crude oil reserves. And actually, a lot of these nations today are fairly wealthy. But what we'll see is that the nations today that actually are the wealthiest are the ones that had the best resources about 100 years ago. And so those nations are still capitalizing on those resources. Okay, um, This isn't the best map to end with because it's a little misleading. This just shows crude oil reserves. Um, but if you were to look up, say, the UN World Health Index, um, you would see that the nations that are the wealthiest are nations like the United States, Canada, Britain, um, and the nations around Britain who were able to industrialize first, largely because of their geographic resources and the fact that they were still reaping the benefits of European benefits after 1500. Okay. All right.